subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Greetings, everybody. It's good to be here in Delhi. And uh, with all of you, I'm grateful to Dr. Taylor and WFTC for inviting me. I know I'm among friends. Since way back in 1985, a therapeutic community called Second Genesis saved my life and set me on a journey of 37 years of recovery. Uh, Yay! Power of the group, power of the group, that's what does it. Um, I'm here to speak today about a topic that I believe will be of interest to you and those you serve, and that is toxic adulterants in the supplies of heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamine, and other drugs. What substances are we discovering added to drug supplies, and why does it matter? As you know, the contents of drugs have changed worldwide since 2010. I'm assuming you all are familiar with fentanyl that can be lethal, but there are also new synthetic compounds such as cannabinoids and cathinones that can also be lethal. What many people don't know is that at the same time that new cannabinoids and other substances started to come out, traffickers began changing the cutting agents in heroin, cocaine, and meth so that they could compete with the effects of fentanyl, cathinones, and cannabinoids. Today, Mexican cartels are not only producing traditional drugs like meth and heroin, they've also gotten into the market of new synthetic compounds. But before I get into the slides, I want to give you some backstory on how the topic of toxic adulterants came to the attention of the U.S. State Department and the Colombo Plan, an international organization based in Sri Lanka, who I am representing today. And some of this backstory actually involves WFTC. In 2010, the U.S. State Department and Colombo Plan started looking into the changing phenomena of contents of the world drug supply. And this inquiry was precipitated after the State Department went to Brazil to figure out why our clients were getting inexplicably sick with a range of diseases and organ problems, including kidney failure. It was determined that these health problems in Brazil were being manifested primarily by cocaine users, so the Brazilian police reanalyzed 2,000 drug samples that had been seized and found that cocaine cutting agents had changed. So then a strange light bulb moment occurred that actually involves WFTC. And here's how the story goes. In early 1996, at the WFTC conference in St. Petersburg, Russia, Alan Bray of Shar House in Detroit told the State Department about lots of health problems he was experiencing from his previous heroin use and wondered if perhaps they were being caused from the cutting agents that were rarely identified during that time period when he was using drugs. Other TC leaders such as Jerry Stevens of Shar House, Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Flowers of Second Genesis also reported similar health problem experiences to the State Department. Then when the situation occurred in 2010 in Brazil with users getting mysteriously sick, a light went off in the mind of the U.S. State Department, which then decided to analyze street drugs around the world to see if that same phenomena was happening um, as around the world as in Brazil. In time, in fact, 2010, the State Department expanded the project with the Colombo Plan to more extensively test street drugs worldwide, and that testing we're still doing today with some very startling results. And these are the results I'll be sharing with you today. As you know, illicit drugs are rarely pure, and let me make a distinction between dilutants and adulterants. Dilutants are inactive substances added to bulk out the product, and adulterants are pharmacologically active ingredients. And they're added not only to give bulk, but to complement, enhance, or produce synergistic effects. So let's take a look at quinine, a medication used to treat malaria and which is frequently used to cut heroin. As you can see, quinine has been related to cardiovascular toxicity. I want to take a closer look at some of the test results of the seized drugs and uh, let you know what we're finding in them. So we'll look at four countries first, Brazil, Argentina, Ecuador, and South Africa. And later, uh, I'll show you some slides on the U.S. So for the next five slides or so, I'll give you a quick walking tour through what our drug testing efforts have discovered and some of the trends that we're seeing. 
So here are some test results from Brazil in 2014. We see three adulterants, phenacetin, aminopyrene, and levamazole. In some cases, as much as 60% phenacetin in crack and 50% levamazole in cocaine HCI. Here are some results from Argentina and Ecuador. In Argentina, in Paco, the term used for cocaine paste base, we find combinations of phenacetin and metamazole and phenacetin and aminopyrene. In Ecuador, in a new street drug we discovered known as H, we found heroin cut with diltiazam and phenacetin in cocaine, and we found cocaine HCI cut with levamazole and lidocaine. So what are some of the health effects of these adulterants we're finding in street level samples in Argentina and Brazil? As you can see from the legend, the adulterants, which are highlighted in yellow, metamazole, aminopyrene, and levamazole, these deplete white blood cells, and those highlighted in orange, phenacetin, deplete red blood cells and produce kidney damage. In the Ecuador street level samples of heroin, we see upwards of eight adulterants, those are in the red letters, along with impurities from the heroin manufacturing process in green letters. In South Africa in 2017, we saw as high as 94% of phenacetin in cocaine supplies and 32% phenacetin in heroin. Levamazole was also present at 16% in cocaine, as well as acetophenamine in heroin at 18%. Again, in South Africa, we see the range of adulterants being added to cocaine and heroin, as many as four in the far right column there, you see. So next I want to take a look at some of the health effects of these adulterants on the human body. Levamazole is toxic and was withdrawn from the U.S. and Canadian markets due to its toxicity. It's actually a veterinary pharmaceutical used primarily to treat worm and parasitic infections in livestock. In humans, it results in a decrease of white blood cells that can lower immunity and increase opportunistic infections such as COVID-19. So if we take a look at levamazole, why are traffickers dumping it into global drug supplies? In vivo, meaning within a living organism such as a user's body, levamazole is metabolized to aminorex, a compound with amphetamine-like psychostimulatory properties and a long half-life. This property allows levamazole to potentiate and prolong the stimulatory effects of cocaine while bulking up the drug to increase profit to the dealer. So in other words, for less cost and more profit, the traffickers are selling levamazole masquerading as cocaine. To give you a sense of how toxic levamazole is to the human body, a great deal of literature has documented the clear link between levamazole adulterated cocaine and a range of health problems, including broad cognitive and neuroanatomical impairments due to the thinning of the brain's prefrontal cortex. So levamazole thins the prefrontal cortex of your brain, which allows you to think clearly and have executive function. So maybe your clients are being affected. Um, let's take a look at the adulterant phenacetin that is found so widely in illicit drug supplies around the world. It produces a condition in which bread, red blood cells are prematurely destroyed, affecting the transfer of oxygen in the body. Chronic use of phenacetin is associated with severe kidney damage, as well as a risk of death due to renal diseases, cancers, and cardiovascular diseases. Um, here you can see the way in which drug users versus non-drug users are so much more vulnerable to the effects of phenacetin. In the 1960s, aspirin containing phenacetin caused health problems, but it took years and years for these problems to appear in people, and then phenacetin was banned and removed from the market. In the case of a crack user who might be smoking cocaine containing phenacetin, for example, 15 times a day, seven days a week for six months straight, very severe health problems are appearing in such users, not after years, but after mere months.
Aminopyrene is a banned analgesic and anti-inflammatory that is a major adulterant found in drug supplies. It causes a dramatic decrease in white blood cells and suppresses the body's ability to fight off even the most minor of infections. So those who are smoking aminopyrene-laden cocaine paste are likely to identify, to, to experience rather, ra rapidly developing uh, life-threatening infections. So as you can begin to see, the adulterants in the world drug supplies are far from harmless and benign. They're causing organ damage, cancer, and reduced immunity by attacking the red and white blood cells of the drug user's body. Red blood cells are attacked in the case of phenacetin, white blood cells in the case of levamazole, metamazole, and aminopyrene. So we'll look briefly at two other adulterants found in the drug supply. This is diltiazam. My husband takes it for high blood pressure. It's a, a drug that belongs to a class of calcium channel blockers. Uh, and as I said, lots of people take it for blood pressure. But when it's combined with heroin, which is what dealers are doing, it has a double depressant effect. As an adulterant, it can cause adverse cardiovascular reactions, including angina, bradycardia, hypotension, arrhythmia, and when it's combined with cocaine, it potentiates cocaine toxicity and, co and toxic cardiac effects. Metamazole uh, is the last one we'll probably look at. It's properly used as a pain reliever, fever reducer, spasm reliever. But a side effect in drug users is complete and total immunity suppression due to attacks on the white blood cells. And when it's combined with heroin, it results in, in analgesic potentiation and has a double depressant effect. Starting in 2015-2016, the Colombo plan decided to test drugs in the U.S. And here's what we found. In the 1980s, drugs were barely cut one or two adulterants versus in 2021, where you'll see the drugs are being cut 15 to 18 times with a range of adulterants. You'll see those are in, in blue letters and fentanyls in purple. In 2016, 2017, the patterns are shifting. We find in the U.S. states of Vermont and Kentucky samples of seized drugs, one fentanyl there in purple being detected and multiple traditional adulterants in red letters. Again, we see in 2016, 2017 in samples from Vermont and Kentucky, one fentanyl in purple is being in detected. By 2021, these samples from New Hampshire, Ohio, and Illinois, three other states in the U.S., we see multiple fentanyls and cathinones and synthetic cannabinoids. So not just fentanyl, but multiple and lethal compounds. Here you can see that by 2021, the fentanyls in purple, synthetic cathinones in red letters, and the synthetic cannabinoids in orange are all in the same single drug sample. Again, here in 2021, we got the same issue going here. I've been tapping it and not going. The multiple fentanyls, all of these cathinones, cannabinoids, and fentanyls in the same drug sample, in 2021, we also began to see a trend in the adulterant story, and that is the proliferation of veterinary drugs being used. Not only levamazole, but also xylazine and phenobutazone. You can see these specific veterinary drugs that are highlighted here in yellow, and uh, they're from the seized drug samples in Pennsylvania. So the drug dealer said, why stop at human medications? Uh, let's just go ahead and raid the veterinary uh, products and start dumping those in. One of these is xylazine in vet medicine. It's an animal sedative, but in humans it acts as a central nervous system depressant. As an adulterant in heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl, it can potentiate sedation and increase the risk of fatal overdose. It's a tricky adulterant. I don't know if you all have heard of naloxone, but if you administer it correctly, uh, you can reverse overdose. But with xylazine in the mix, studies show that naloxone will be far less effective. We got a lot of people out there using naloxone and not realizing they're putting it into a drug user's body who has these adulterants in it and they're not able to save the person. Uh, phenobutazone uh, is a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug for the short term treatment of pain and fever in animals. But in humans, it can induce blood disorders like aplastic anemia, which causes the bone marrow to stop producing red and white blood cells and platelets. Finally, in our Chicago street level samples, you can see the multiple adulterants that are highlighted in yellow. 
These deplete the white blood cells and of course are the body's virus fighting cells which was especially serious during COVID because of the reduced immunity. Okay, so here we are at the last slide. And please understand that what you're looking at here uh, are not the contents of street level drug samples. You're looking at what was identified in the bloodstreams of users when they overdosed. These are two overdose cases in the emergency room at a hospital in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And in their bloodstreams were the following. Multiple fentanyls in purple, a new synthetic opioid, isotonotazine, which is in red letters, veterinary products, xylazine and levamisole, those are in brown letters. And all of these, in addition to the traditional drugs of meth, heroin, cocaine, were all in one user's bloodstream. So in closing, the key point here and what I'd like you to take away from this presentation is that the makeup of what is in the bloodstreams of users who are overdosing and what is being detected on the street drug, in street drug samples, which are so laden with toxic adulterants, are mirroring one, one another. So what's driving the epidemic of overdose is far more complex than we previously thought. It's far more complex than simply the presence of fentanyl. The role of these toxic adulterants, which are being added by profit-seeking drug traffickers in increasingly larger amounts and combinations, should not be underestimated and ignored. Thank you all so much for hanging in with me.